The most recent update to the Mavic 3 includes a lot of great improvements, but there is one addition that I believe will be one of the most widely used and highly favored features that DJI has ever offered in their drones, and it's cruise control. This feature has so much potential for the average drone pilot to create some amazing moves with ease. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Let's start the video off today with a fun comment from my last video. Now, this one is from Kung Fu Chicken, and he says, that's a terrible rule. My mom can kill a fly with her slipper at 200 feet. Congrats to your mom, my friend. And if you leave an interesting comment down below, you could make it in a future video. So yesterday I updated everything on my Mavic 3 and I took it out to test a few things that I was curious about when it comes to cruise control. So first of all, I wanted to know if wind had any effect at all on the cruise control. It was about 30 mile per hour wind gusts yesterday, so it was a perfect day to test that out. Secondly, I wanted to see how fast you could set the cruise control on the Mavic 3. I wanted to know, can you go just as fast with the cruise control on or does it limit the maximum speed? And then the last thing that I wanted to see is if you could lock in more than just your horizontal speed, like does it work for yaw and does it work for elevation as well? So as I mentioned, cruise control, in my opinion, will be used by a large percentage of Mavic 3 owners. And I really hope they eventually add it to other drones like the Mini 3 Pro and the Air 2S, just because I really think it's gonna be very powerful and I think people are gonna love it. You know, being able to keep a steady speed for long periods of time can be pretty difficult for a lot of people, especially if your fingers don't work like they did 20 years ago. I don't know about you, but if I'm having to hold a stick steady for any length of time, it tends to get a little bit shaky and it's not consistent. And then also I think hyperlapses are going to be so much easier and so much better overall. And just cinematic footage in general using the cruise control will come more easily for anyone, whether you are a veteran or a beginner drone pilot. So now, first of all, to use cruise control, I don't, I didn't record my, um, my screen yesterday, I didn't re record me using the controller. I forgot to put on my chesty and, and use a camera to record that. So I'll just put some B-roll up here to show you, you know, exactly the moves that I'm making as I'm speaking about them. But to get into cruise control, you wanna click on the little three dots in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, and then you click on control, and then you scroll down to the custom buttons. Now I recommend using the C2 button, this one on the right-hand side on the back, because this gives you the most flexibility to set your speed and your yaw without having to position your fingers awkwardly. And yes, you heard that correctly. You can also lock in your yaw movement. Now I'll show you that here in just a little bit. So as I said, the first thing that I wanted to test out was if the cruise control was affected by any cross winds. So what I did is I put it up, I flew almost directly into the wind. Actually, I was flying straight west and the wind was coming from the southwest at up to 30 miles per hour gusts. And as you can see, the wind had basically no impact on the direction of the drone. I pointed straight ahead and it just kept going straight ahead. So that was good. I just pushed the stick forward full throttle. I clicked on the C2 button and away it went straight ahead. Then what I did is I turned it around and once again, I flew straight. So and it, it didn't move at all. I thought it would push a little bit to the left, you know, with that wind pushing on it, but it didn't affect it at all. So the next thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to see how fast I could fly and set the cruise. And so I flipped it into sport mode. I pushed full throttle straight ahead into the wind, just like I did the first time. And if you look right here, even though I had the stick all the way forward, I was pushing it all the way forward, the speed fluctuated because of the wind. You know, the variable wind was affecting you know, how fast it was going. So what I did is I just locked it in at 32.9 miles per hour, but the actual speed varied as the wind changed. So I did get it up to about 46 miles per hour. And then on the way back, it held pretty steady at about 46 and a half miles per hour. So even though the wind did not push the drone off track, it does alter the speed, you know, as it increases. So the cruise control speed is set is, is not based on the speed that you're actually traveling at the time. It's based on the position of your control stick. So just keep that in mind. If, you're, if your footage requires your drone to stay in a constant speed and it's windy out, it's probably not gonna be able to do that because the wind's gonna affect it, okay? So that's one thing that you should know. The next thing that I wanted to see is if I could lock in more than just speed. Could I move both sticks into a certain position and then hit the cruise control, would the drone continue 
you know, along that path. So what I did is I just flew straight ahead and then I added just a little bit of right yaw. I hit the cruise control and then sure enough, it continued in that direction. So at this point, I was not controlling the sticks at all. And I think that's so powerful, you guys, because now people can focus on the gimbal control while keeping a nice steady movement with their drone. Also, you still have the ability to control the drone if you want to while it's in cruise control mode. You know, so if you anticipate that something bad's gonna happen, you can grab a hold of those sticks and move the drone in whichever direction that you need to. So that's a pretty nice feature that it's not totally locked in with cruise control. You still have some flexibility. So after playing with it just a little bit more, I flew it over to the new hospital where it's almost done. I guess they're moving into it this March, but I flew over to the new hospital and I wanted to see if it would lock in altitude parameters as well. So what I did is I started at about 160 feet. I added a little bit of right tracking with a little bit of left yaw and then increase in altitude. I hit the cruise control and yep, it locked in. It kept going up, it kept going to the right and it kept yawing to the left. So the only thing I have to worry about then you guys, I can just let go of the sticks and you can control that gimbal and you can get that really nice cinematic footage. Okay, now just a couple of things that you should know when using the cruise control on the Mavic 3. So when I was flying around the hospital there and I added a little bit of altitude increase along, you know, with my tracking and everything. So I wanted to get a nice cinematic movement. Um, I forgot to change my maximum height on my settings, on my control set, on my safety settings. I had, I've been messing with that with my numbers on there. And for some reason I had it set to 751 feet for my maximum height. And so what happened was when it got to a certain height, like I think it was 393 feet, um, it said, hey, you're getting above the maximum height. And I just kind of wasn't paying attention. All of a sudden I look at my, you know, my height, my altitude, and I'm at like over 400 feet. I'm like, oh crap. So I brought it down, you know, with the control stick, but then I let go and it kept going up. So just know you need to set those maximum uh, numbers, the maximum height, and then also the maximum distance because uh, if you don't, like like me, I normally have my maximum distance set to no limit because I just don't want to worry about it. So I always have it on no limit. But just know that if you do that and you have the cruise control on, it's going to keep going. And before you know it, you might not realize that you're farther away than you really should be, you know, especially if you don't have your eyes on the drone. So just make sure that you set a maximum number. And I just tested it out to make sure, like I set my maximum to like 1,500 feet or something like that, 15, 1,600 feet. And then I just you know, flew straight ahead, I hit the cruise control, and then when it got to that distance, it actually disengages the cruise control and it stops the drone. So that's a nice safety feature to have, you know, if you forget to set something, it's gonna stop it for you, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, some people are gonna ask, what if you, um, you forget to change your maximum distance and you have it on no limit and it just keeps going and keeps going and all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I'm so far away, it loses connection, you're not paying attention or something. Will it come back? Yes, it will. If it loses signal, uh, it will come home automatically. If you know if you lose signal or your battery's too low, the return to home will kick in and it will come home. So you don't have to worry about it flying off, you know, into forever. It'll it'll eventually come back. So that safety is in there. So just know that those two things are pretty important. You want to set your distance limits and your and your altitude limit on there. So. So yeah, overall, you guys, I think, like I said, cruise control is going to be one of the most widely used features on the Mavic 3. The Mavic 3 Classic, it's already out on. That's how they rolled this out, you know, when they released the Mavic 3 Classic. And I really, really think that it'll come to the Mini 3 Pro and the Air 2S as well, just because I think it's going to be so many, so many people that are going to be using it and they're going to want it. They're going to say, hey, I want that cruise control. It's so fun and it's so easy to get cinematic footage. So let me know if you got any questions about it or comments or anything at all down in the comments. And if you comment something interesting, uh, you might make it into one of my future videos. So be sure to follow me on social media, you guys, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I do a lot of fun, different things over there that you won't see here on the channel. And then also it's a better place to reach out to me if you wanna contact me. You know, I reply a little bit more on those platforms like on DMs and instant messages than I do on YouTube just because it's a lot to manage. But you know, if you reach out to me on those social media platforms, I'm more likely to get back to you. So thanks for watching the video today. Hey, hit the thumbs up too. Hit that like button. And if you really appreciate the videos that I put together, you guys, and you feel like you really want to let me know that you appreciate it, there's a thing called super thanks down below. Man, it is windy today. There's a super thanks down below. It's a little heart. Uh, go ahead and click on that. And that's a, a way to say an extra special thank you for the effort put into my videos. So thank you for considering that. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks for watching. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.